at 4.38, and we'll see what happens with Mr. Thurber. And we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance. Where's the flag? Right behind you. Oh, there. Oh. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You gotta do a roll call, Mr. Sapp. Ms. Berry? Yes. Ms. Graves? Yes. Uh, Mr. LaFountain? Here. Ms. Mitchell? Here. Ms. Morgan? Here. Mr. Peters? Here. Mr. Theodore? Okay, thank you. And if we can have a motion to approve the agenda with the um, agenda. Motion. Motion by second. Mrs. Mitchell, and I heard a second by Mrs. Morgan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Dr. Palmer. Yes, ma'am. Discuss and review the following strategic plan, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, to share the board with the board the strategic plan, that's on a standstill right now because of some. Uh, uh, technical difficulties between the BOCES down the Binghamton area and us. The uh, the coaster that we are supposed to go through has not been developed, so it's been a, good, it's a longer process than what it's supposed to be. So um, I've been in communication with Ms. Uh, with Sean Brady. Um, he hasn't applied for it down there, so and I've also been in communication with the DS from that that BOCES. So they're going to try to move it along as quick as they possible, but because of the nature of the beast. Um, we will not, we probably will not be doing strategic planning until November. Okay. So concerning that. Um, overall policy development. Um, also we'll be talking this, we'll be talking about this in the, in the board retreat tonight, but um, we still have sections 4,000 and 9,000. We do have all the sections now. Um, zero to 3,000 has been sitting at school boards for the final piece as, as with the board came back and with administration. We looked at those and in the language that you wanted in there and you adaptations. Um, we're just waiting for them to publish it for us. So that piece is, is going on there. Um, I've done 4,000 and 5,000 with the administrator input. So with our group, when we want to start up, whether we want to do something live like this, or you can do it if it's easier because of people's schedules, we can, because it's not a, it's not a true board meeting. It's just a committee. We could do it. I could, I could do a Google doc with you. I'm not a Google doc, Google share. And we can do it that way. So we can figure that out tonight, how you want to proceed. Um, we can accelerate that through pretty good. There's a couple that are very, very lean. And then there's one section that is extremely large. Um, Randy's also been gracious where we're working on 6,000, which is the financial one. So, but we have 4,000 and 9,000. And I think that could go pretty quick. Okay. Um, just however the board wants to uh, move forward in that. Like I said, doing a Google or doing it live or a combination thereof. Um, policy 2000, that's simply just a board policy on uh, discussing that, evaluation of the Board of Education. Um, Sherry had put that on, for any further discussion with that. Another piece that Bonnie and I were talking about, I don't know if the board is interested, but like sometimes it's, it's, also, it's also very difficult for you if you're evaluating yourself after 10 months or 11 months and you don't remember early on, we could also do an evaluate a survey if you wanted to at the conclusion of each meeting where you felt we hit the objectives of the of the uh, of the agenda say uh, conversation was rich wasn't rich um, you know you could come up with your own pieces so then you'd have that and you can archive it and have your own evaluation so at the end of the year you'll remember what you said not exactly but what you said or what you thought was going on in that October meeting or November meeting so just food for thought for that. If the board wanted to consider that, we could also develop something along the lines there. Um, evaluation rubric and tools. Um, reopening a school. And this came on, this is on a two front, I would like to say. The first one is from what messages I've gotten through the reopening with people coming in and dropping the children off. Um, parents have been very obliging few problems, little things, but I mean, overall, it, it's a little disheartening to see this, the students kind of just blase and are not 
super engaged, but you know, you got half your population. Um, but kids have been very respectful, very mindful of the of, of wearing of the mask, especially all the way up through the elementary school. So there was no fear of that. Um, and then the second part, uh, Mr. Peters had talked about in the last one about the reopening of the entirety of the building, the reopening of the reopening. Um, I've been in communication with the health department, uh, probably on the average of three to four times a day as issues have come up. Uh, what we're looking at, if at anything, is, is looking, the piece that sometimes everybody doesn't realize it's one thing to say your doors are open again, but the amount of furniture that we have to bring back into rooms and clean and do those things, you're talking four to six weeks before we'd even consider after saying it's okay to have that that furniture stuff. So what I talked about was I had a long meeting with Mr. Lefebvre. Um, we discussed if we were looking at after, after Halloween and Sarah, you could, I'm not really sure exactly right now because we're also in flu season coming up. But if we looked at after, if we looked after possibly Thanksgiving, we would have to start putting furniture back in the rooms about mid mid November, like November fourth or fifth, and work at in the nighttime and start moving rooms back gradually. Even though students wouldn't be there, you'd have a full capacity of, of, of furniture. And then when we said it was okay to go based upon the matrix and, and the current situation, the furniture's in the rooms. Um, we really couldn't break it down as I looked at the, I really looked at this. We'd have, my recommendation would be we'd have to go K-5 and not K-2 and then 3-5. For the fact of elementary families all together, it's very likely if a family member would have somebody in second and fourth grade and it'd make it very difficult for them to have one child on an A-B schedule and the other kid on a full day schedule. So doing it, I think we'd have to do it uniformly um, pre-K through five at one time. And then two week interval, we would do middle school and then high school. Um, the concern is we haven't hit the second, the second piece of the pandemic yet. But as far as moving forward, that's what we figured it was going to take. It would take about four weeks to reestablish the, the um, elementary school with the furniture and such. And the other piece is the weather. If the weather changed on us and we got snow, a lot of our furniture is in conics boxes. So now you're now you're going in to to a cold area with snow on your feet coming in, and then you're you're cleaning your space as you're constantly. So it'd be a much slower process. Um, but, but as I said, it was something we looked at. I did start a document. I had an initial conversation with the uh, leadership team, and then talk with Mr. Lefebvre. So we can we can start moving forward as far as the blueprint or the framework for it, but there's still a lot of unknowns. Uh, just to share with you, um, there was some people being upset with. There was a letter which we'll talk in your retreat also about communication, but we sent a letter out to the community. Um, Randy is our, our our COVID officer, and Shannon's done a great job as the deputy, where we work very collectively and closely together as a threesome. Um, we got the okay from the health department, from, from the, the head of the health department says that we could move from the DOH to the CDC. So the CDC had, and you'll see it in your, uh, you'll see it in there. Um, it's got six symptoms versus the 11, but within the symptoms that they have, it overlaps about nine of them. There's two that were left out. So we got, we got a, a response from our, our physician or our nurse practitioner, who's our, our school physician, very upset that um, we took those out. The information, everything that we do, just to share with the board, nothing, is not, nothing we do here is not vetted through the health department. Any decision that we make is, goes through the health department. It's not Randy Sapp or Tom Palmer read this, hey, let's go run with that. I had a conversation with the leadership over there. They said it was good. They said it was definitely acceptable. It made sense. And then the next day, that, that uh, feeling changed. So since that time, we've also changed. The other part is that there's a number of community members very upset, and I understand that. And there's nothing we can do. When, they, when a child gets sent home from school, they must go to a doctor, they must have a COVID test, and it must come back. Our medical field right now here, some of our doctors do not want to comply with that. 
they don't feel that children should have to have a COVID test every time. That is guidance that we receive. We don't have a choice in the matter. But it is making people upset. I get that. You know, you have to take time off of work. Your doctor also has to uh, be obliging and making sure that follows through. If anyone didn't know also today, today, tomorrow, and Friday, there are also free COVID tests being done up in Plattsburgh by the health department. Because such, there's such an overflow at the hospital, uh, Mr. Canoes is trying to take that burden off of the hospital. We couldn't even get in the ambulance bay or the ambulance area. There's such a large line at the hospital. So, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> but just so the board hours. knows, if you get somebody complaining or, or upset, we we understand it, and it's not that they're being they're not they're not being poo pooed and not being listened to. But the problem is, we have governance that we have to also abide by. Mm -hmm. Uh, the problem was the change, the change in the 12 symptoms to the nine. In, in the biggest language, just for the record, for the board knows, was if you want to look in that document, the, the package I gave you, it's also it's right after the superintendent's. Uh, the superintendent's goals, it's the next two documents. So if you look, this is a letter that came in conjunction with the CBS and the health department, where it gives you all the symptoms, fever, chills, new cough, congested running nose, new loss of taste of smell, fatigue, muscle or body aches, headaches, sore throat, shortness of breath, nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea. The document that we shared with both email and over the phone to the health department was a daily home screening for students by the CDC, which said, and we had changed the temperature to be 100 degrees to a line, but it says temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, sore throat, new uncontrolled cough that causes difficulty breathing for students with chronic allergic asthmatic cough or a change in the cough from baseline, diarrhea, vomiting, or abdominal pain, and new onset of severe headache, especially with a fever. So we went with that for about 20 hours. And then and then reverted back to the original. I wanted the board just to be aware of that. Now, again, this is a shorter document, but it had two key words that we really liked because the problem was, as you all had children, you feel what's what's a what's a cough? What's the fines of the level of cough? It's like when you go to the doctor and they say, What's your level of pain? Is it zero to five, right there, or one to ten? Yeah. So just so the board knows, it was vetted first by the health department, but we have gone back and our screening process has gone consistent with that. Well, the board has any questions on that, Don? Any questions? No, I don't, I did see, I saw the CDC stuff come down through and I don't know, it's a big difference in what we have. So we're right there. So, so what we are we'll doing, follow. so the board exactly. knows from now on, we will not, this school district will not vary one iota from the Department of Health, New York State Department of Health. They are the governing body that makes the decisions for this. New York State Education Department doesn't, but it's actually the Department of Health. So we'll align ourselves with the Department of Health guidance, and we will also vet it through our attorneys to make sure. <clears throat> Be interesting to see if the flu outbreak yes. is not mm -hmm. as great as it has been in recent years because of the uh, provisions that have been put forth. The masks, uh, sanitizing, uh, fewer days. Should be fewer cases of norovirus, or should be fewer cases of flu. Theoretically, if everybody's doing what they need to do, you're not going to have to spread it because we don't have it before. But you'll have it outside because we'll have it in soccer because we'll have kids. We'll have kids mingling within the six foot area. There, there is no social distancing on that. Um, the other the other struggle and issue we have is parents are upset because of um, I don't I don't know what the board's feeling is, but if we set these parameters and we we spent as an administrative team five months of the summer, starting in March, to come up with plans that are coherent to 18 pages of assurances and they tell us you have to do this, this and this. And then I'll buy the way after school, you can have soccer and they're all gone. So there's no more. You have strict guidance on your six foot social distancing, 
You're supposed to have single points of entrance. We got kids going up one stairwell, down another. But then on a soccer field, they can wear where they want. And then after school, how do you govern when you put two kids in the same vehicle and not from the same household? That is that is the struggle. And you're trying to you're trying to be responsible when they use words like contact tracing and cohorts. I mean, things that I'm very proud about our district is we 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 are very. I think I cannot say with 100% certainty, but if we had a situation, unfortunately, that arose, that arose in the elementary school, I don't think we'd have to close our entire elementary school. We are very homogeneous, classroom by classroom. We can trace our kids very well. High school, middle school, it's much more difficult for the fact that kids are, are mingling, right? They have to anyway, go from classroom to classroom. So on a theoretical model, if you have 12 kids in a class, it wouldn't happen. But 12 kids in a class, you go to nine periods, you theoretically could have 108 contacts. You know, but, um, so that's where we are. Uh, we're monitoring it every day. I, I, do the, uh, I do the piece with the, uh, with the health department. We missed one day and of course got the, the mean letter. But since that time, every day at 10 o'clock or so, I make sure we get our, our information into the State Department of Health on uh, any confirmed, any cases, any testing procedures, things like that. I don't know how we're, we're really reliable, liable for that also when you have the health department that has that information because if it doesn't come back to the school district right away. So good news on the other part, another one of my meetings that I had and Mr. Urban's here. Um, we talked and as everyone knows that you're supposed to have social distancing at 12 feet for physical education and for music. We got the okay to, to move some steps forward with our, our, our music and and thank you also to Mrs. Morgan, staying abreast of all, all the current research, even though it doesn't always comply to New York because New York's a special place. But we are going to have a we're going to have a uh, we're going to have a, a concert October sixteenth on a Friday night or Friday five o'clockish um, because it's going to be before dark, and we're going to do the same very similar format that we did for our graduation. We're going to drive in, so people will be able to drive in what was normally known prior to the field over in the middle of our district. And we'll have, um, we'll have a three-part concert. We'll have the chorus, we'll have the band, and we'll also have the, the, the strings. Uh, we're probably about four, where we talked about it, probably about 45 minutes to the hour. We also have got, we've also been granted permission that our kids can be six foot socially distanced apart for our, our singing. Um, Mr. Peters, thank you. We also talked to, uh, to the Lions Club, to an individual there that's also making a donation to us for some of those uh, wrappings for the devices for our, our wind instruments. So our kids, we're going to make sure all our safety protocols are in place, and we're going to move. We're going to move forward, but slow and cautiously. But we're going to also we want to make sure that our kids in the arts also has an opportunity. So it might be two events. I know Mr. Urban's also pushing for the uh, talent show, but you know the hard part is if we go into the if we go into our athletics facility. It's only two people per student. So when we do our soccer, whether we have 20 kids and the other team has 20, that's 40 people, that's 40 students, they would have 80 people allowed to go there. Um, and just so the board knows that we are screening everybody that goes into, the, into that facility at that time, um, the visitors are also going to have to have a roster and then we'll check IDs for the parents to make sure that two people are only permitted on the premise. They're doing that in the town too. So, I mean, it's, so. it's you know, safety protocol all over. So. But we're trying, you know, we are trying, like I said, music department's been great to work with. And, uh, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna do the same thing and provide the kids the opportunity. We'll park cars 12 feet apart so people can actually get out when their children are performing. Like a drive-in movie theater almost where you can stand in front or sit in front of your lawn chair. It won't be that long, but, you know, it'll probably be, what do you think, Chris, 12, 12 14 minutes maybe? Yeah, in that in that oh, neighborhood. That's good too. Yep. And then when the when the children are done performing, the kids will get back in the vehicle with their parents versus graduation where they all would stay out. So the health department was good with that. We got the okay. Um, and I think they know that we try to be prudent in, in our planning and making sure we try to provide the safest environment we can. So everybody just cross it's good weather. 
and uh, we will, we're planning for that event also. Um, one last thing just to share with you as far as our, um, our sports right now, Mary's doing an awesome job, a fantastic, working extremely hard. She's had a, a, a Google Meet for the parents understanding what's going on. So grades six through 12 right now, we have a lot of kids trying out for the varsity team. So the other kids will probably filter back. But right now in our, our, uh, in our intramural league or teams, we have 40 kids, 20 on each day. So you have 20 on the A group day and 20 on the B group. We expect probably more. It will probably more than likely be co-ed. It will also <clears throat> have an opportunity to be skill-based as we talked about with the board anyway, but also it may be ability level where if you have some kids that just want to play recreational and they can play together and the kids that are, you know, that are much higher skilled that want to play a harder competitive game, we want to be able to match both needs. So we've also put that in consideration. Um, the coaches that we're going to coach the JV and modified, uh, three of them are also going to be involved with that. So we will still have some instruction. And we never, we never opted out of the thing with the opportunity would be if other districts um, had intramurals or decided to do something similar, there's always that opportunity for an extramural game also, something for competition. But just so the board's well aware, that does not mean that we could take our intramural team and play against a formal modified team. You don't cross over with the New York State Public High School. Um, and, and for what sports? This is soccer. Soccer. We have well the intramurals. We're we're a little light. We're, we've got a nice looking team as far as the number of participants for the varsity uh, boys and girls cross country. Cross country, I think right now is very light though for the modified for the younger students anyway for that piece. Um, you know, it's 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 a very demanding piece. I mean, it's running <laughs> and running. You know, so. Um, I think we have six kids right now. But again, I think as time goes, it's also hard because when you have kids only here half time, A days or B days, you know, they don't catch everything. So we've been sending messages out and um, we hopefully will have that grow also. But like I said, a very solid cross country team though. A lot of, a lot of kids, they're outside Randy's on office the other day. So a good number of kids. Uh, what happened with uh, like gymnastics, swimming, tennis, golf? I think those are the four others. Okay, the other ones we have, we do have a swim team. We have about 16 girls. Good. Um, we were able to get the pool by working in conjunction with Plattsburgh. We're, we're allowed to use their pool, and, and, and I don't know what's exactly with their gymnasium, but they're allowed to, um, after our practice, no, before our practice, they're bringing their kids down and using our intermediate, our middle school gym and doing gymnastics. So it, it's a trading, it's a trading of facilities and then cleaning in between. As far as the other opportunities to share with the board, just for, for clearing that up, just for any misconfusion and, or confusion. And, and I apologize if you took it any other way. I was a strong advocate to try to push for um, tennis, golf, bowling for the fact that, um, these are lower end sports that are easier as far as, you know, football and they classified volleyball in their wood football. But section seven did not want to move forward with that activity for that. I, I don't really understand why we would still could have a season for the kids. But what they said was because hypothetically <coughs> golf, these sports are out of season that if we, if we offered sports in the fall that were offered in the, the uh, at Christmas, at the winter season or spring season, our kids will be ineligible. If, uh -huh. if, things, if when things materialize and we were going back to the a normal, uh -huh. our kids would not be able to. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. yes, yes. I thought originally though, the way that the uh, section was moving now, and I had a personal conversation with Matt, I thought we had a good chance of having it to give those kids that opportunity. Right, because they didn't have it in spring. Okay. So. Yeah, and good. with the weather still being very good, the month of October, you still could get out there. Yeah. So, um, you know, the board, if the board wants to, we can also look for drumming up interest. Um, right now, I don't think the board approved a, um, a tennis coach. 
but we could also run the same type of thing for intramurals. But we talked about basically the Caligo piece. The bowling alley just opened up and it's super restrictive up there too because of an inside event that you can know you can have any more than five people on a set of lanes. If your child was going to actually participate, you have to be in the bar. You're not allowed out on the lanes. Um, it's very limited on what, what they can and cannot do. Any questions of the board on that? Yes, Mr. Uh, um, our sports teams will be wearing masks at all times, right? I heard that correctly the last week. They, they are, yes, we, uh, we made a very unified stance. It's not optional. Okay. If a student does not wear a mask, they do not participate in soccer on the soccer field. We are expecting the same thing from the other teams. Okay. Um, there was also four other teams that also stated and made the same statement that Mary brought to me. If, if someone comes to their, their, their school and they are not wearing a mask, they will not play them. So that is choice. I, I did see an intramural or in a, um, one of the North Country soccer leagues playing the other day. They all had masks on and they were playing hard. It wasn't, I didn't appear to affect anyone. I don't know if there's anecdotal evidence otherwise, but I did see it and it was, seemed like it was going pretty well. So. Even the newscast with the yeah. soccer teams and the, at the college level had masks on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, NCAA is requiring it for any activities, even in sport activities. Mm -hmm. um, so it's except the Division One football. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, That's, you <laughs> the know, coach has to have it, which it, is it, the most important. You have to go baby steps, or we're going to be right back where we were in March, and that's my my feeling. We we went along with regulations. We were firm in what we did with graduation, and I know people out there are saying, "Well, other districts are doing this, and other districts are doing that." This is Peru, we are looking at the safety. We don't want to have something happen that we have to close down a school for two weeks or four weeks or whatever. We want the best we can do for the kids, give the kids opportunities, but be safe and follow the guidelines. And if, if that's the case that, okay, so so-and-so is doing, wow, well, they're doing all JV, modified soccer, uh, you know, varsity and so on, so be it. Right now, I, I firmly believe we have to go on baby steps and that we, we do, we bring the cohort group in, you know, one group at a time. You, you start bringing the mass in, and that's where you have situations that we've seen in a local school district. Um, that, that's my firm belief in it, and I think we're doing the right thing safety-wise. I think we're doing a lot of good things, and I think we're offering opportunities for kids um, that otherwise they wouldn't have if we restricted, totally restricted, um, you know, and, as far as as the the rides back and forth, you know, and, and carpooling, I guess I look at any school sponsored event. You have to stay with the six feet rule. That's what we put in our reopening plan. Yeah. That's how I that's how I feel. But I get it from both sides. I know, I and it's hard. Struggle, but it's so hard. But, you know, my understanding is is that we have to transport students as a district to a sporting event. That's true. So parents that are volunteering very nicely, so to transport their child to try to save that option, it's not an option because once we have to get them there to the we event always in, have, in that, a bus. That, that has been for years. So I think that that's part of some of the confusion because people say, well, I can sign my kid out. They can go home with my friend or whatever, that, but that's leaving the event. That's not the getting there, which right. has always been no, the responsibility of the district. Right, but leaving the event though, we're still holding people responsible. Right. And this, it's a COVID time. Right. That's the part it's that the people, big it's not right. normal. Well, you I know. just wanna make sure that we clarify that people who wanted to transport their own child to an event, that that's still not an option. That's not an option. And they can take unless home their own child. child unless there is an unless though. Yep. Unless the child went to a doctor's appointment and the, the parent cleared it with the coach, to bring them to the event, right. but it's not an option. All that, you know, because they because if of COVID. They're from school, they have to get to. Okay. Yes. And that's been for years. Yeah. Right. I think uh, that's just part. I think that got lost sometimes right. in translations. People forget that the getting to has to be by the school. I think we we can all state that our kids had to go on the bus. Right. You know, right. always. Especially when it was Mariah or <laughs> going to Ticonderoga. Ticonderoga. Those are long bus rides. <clears throat> Any other questions? How's, how many kids do we have in the gymnastics program, do you know? As of yesterday, okay, yes, as of yesterday, 18. 
Is that what normal is? That's a solid number. That's yes. pretty good. That sounds wonderful. That's yes. not bad at all. Yeah, that's great. Um, also, so the board knows, as we do have, um, they should be on campus the day of our board meeting and Wednesday. We have Pixelop, which is also the, the camera system that just to refresh the board's memory, that's the one where you can buy the access, like uh, cable access to watch the events from home. Mm -hmm. So when you go on, you go on a website, you're allowed to pull any, any school event across the state. I think it's approximately $10 per month. Mm -hmm. And so and you, it's not like a year subscription, it's season by season. And so we have, the, we have the pixel lot for both two, two places right now. Um, for the uh, football soccer field complex that the people will be able to watch it from home or Florida or wherever they want. And the other one right now is, is in the inter is in a middle school gym because of gymnastics. It's a very tight, that may not be allowed to have two people per, per student. It's a different format. The bleachers are lower. It's more condensed. Uh, Mary and I are looking at that right now. So if parents can't, you know, they can't bring everybody anyway. If you're talking two teams of 18 girls, you're talking 36. The only thing good about this, though, this year, well, good and bad, um, Beekman Town's not part of it, so there's only Plattsburgh and Peru. Um, they'll be pretty competitive, but they have a fairly good-sized number of girls, too, so having that larger number will decrease the number of people being allowed in the gym, but we will have that camera system in now. So Plattsburgh and Peru for gymnastics. Gymnastics. And what about swimming? Swimming is all four schools, but Mariah is going to be doing it virtually. That they'll post their scores. Oh. And us, it'll be all Sable. The try meet you might call it, will be all Sable, Plattsburgh, and Peru. And our numbers at that also is about 16 kids. When you said Pixlot, do you know how that's spelled right now? I assume pixel like I can P -I -X -E give it, I think it's P I X E L L I T. But I will, I'll, uh, I'll make sure. As soon as we have, we have the agreement, and one of the things is to share with the board that the actual uh, athletic club uh, was going to purchase it for the, for the district on behalf of the kids, and it was $5,000 for the two cameras. And the cameras also have a lens mm -hmm. where they'll actually rotate because of the, the electronics that's associated mm -hmm. with it. So, um, we learned that there was a special they had. Because then we also were going through BOCES and it was a $2,000 um, setup fee. They have to run the uh, power and, and the uh, IB core, you know? So what they have is they, they, waive, they waive the cost from the cameras altogether. We still have 2,000, we can run through BOCES for BOCES aid, but we don't pay for the, we don't pay for the cameras. In return, they get 80% of the take of the pick slot. Hmm. Okay. But we don't deal with the money. Randy's office, nobody nobody here has to deal with the money. It's a subscription. Mm -hmm. And so I really thought there's the three-year commitment on that as far as that, if we do it. Um, we also talked about, pos you know, depending on what the season is, is adding a third camera for the main gym. Mm -hmm. So we pretty much would have everything covered. I think that's a great idea. So we're working that out, but right now that wouldn't happen that with the uh, with the lead times of the cameras. They're talking not earlier than late December. And I also brought it up. I said, can I take the camera out of the other gym and transfer it over here? And they weren't agreeing on that. <laughs> yeah. you know. I can see it. <laughs> I think that's so. a great idea because it'll give a lot of people an opportunity. It doesn't have to be for a moment. Like you said, I like the idea of like if your grandparents or something yep. live in Florida. They can watch you play. I think that's one of the other things I'd like to see down the road is possibly doing some sort of communications with kids, commentators, yeah. you know, having an opportunity to do a little bit of discussion and, mm -hmm. and doing what we're doing right now, but they'll be talking about the game. Mm -hmm. It's a great start because you know ESPN people don't do too bad. Mm -hmm. You know. It's also good for math skills. Yeah. Figuring out statistics. I don't think they just forgot the basic math. Uh, what yard line are they on? <laughs> you know. So but that's where we are. So that's, you know, I, I, I really feel good that we're, we're not perfect as usual. And the other part is just to share with the board, as you learn, as Bonnie has shared, we constantly have new updated information, including school districts. School districts that did one thing are flipping to do another. And I just feel as all as we did, we move slow and steady and end up putting on a great graduation ceremony. I think it's the same thing we do with sports. 
We don't have to do what the Joneses do. We, we, we do what we feel is the best for our kids. And if there's, if there's a breakage where there's no cases and opportunities, we still got kids playing on a daily basis, still sharpening their skills. You know, so. And that seems to be an ever-changing story with all the, some of the other districts. This one's out and then oh, this one's only going to do varsity. Oh no, today we're going to do JV and modified and so on. Uh, to me, just flipping around, be consistent. This is where it's going to go. Like I said, baby steps. We, we, that way we can control that cohort group. We know where that cohort group is. I mean, I can't even, I can't even keep the board up to it because I can't keep up with it. I mean, it literally changes. Two days earlier, somebody said one thing, and next yeah. thing you know, it changed again. And some haven't even decided to do anything yet. And some have definitely said varsity only also, mm -hmm. which is our Sable, I know. I'm in constant communication with their superintendent. Right, and I think NAC is nothing. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Transportation is killing them just a bit. Okay. So. Any other questions, comments? I have one last thing just to share with the board that you'll see, just so the board has an understanding. It came in. Uh, Randy crafted it with the, uh, so I don't have any update on it, crafted it with the building principles. So as, as I, can't, I can't thank the Board of Education enough that you've been very supportive, even in a trying time with our technology as um, we were in front of it in March when we needed to get our Chromebooks in and we had the kids one-to-one -one devices. And then again, asking for the $100,000 to do the, um, the laptops for our teachers. And out of that hundred thousand, we spent seventy seventy eight thousand dollars in laptops. We had a little bit of money left over. Um, one of the things that we have in the district was you guys were at one time state of the art, like everybody else, with smart um, smart smart boards. And then they, the generational piece left after these ten years. The smart boards are the interactive board, but you got the LCD project, the LCD projector from the ceiling. Well, they get expensive also because the bulbs that are attached to that can run anywhere between sixty and a hundred, hundred fifty dollars depending on the model. Mm -hmm. Our LCD, our 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 boards are starting to die. They're between ten and twelve years old. So we've been replacing them in the elementary school. They, in an earlier part of the Bond Act, uh, smart schools, we use what they call Parmethium boards, which is an interactive board. It's almost like a computer on the wall. And you don't have to replace the whole board, but just the motherboards, a small device for them. As our older kids, including the high school kids, had smart boards. We transitioned. I, I, I came up with the idea, and Nick and investigated. I said, why don't we use 65 or 70-inch TV set and casting devices at a fraction of the cost, especially you know how low technology has gone in that way as far as what TVs used to be. And we get them for about five Five to six hundred dollars for the TV and the casting device, you're 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 completing about eight hundred dollars total for that same device that costs us between eighteen hundred and three grand. And you still got a good shelf life. So so the and it's easy to replace and, and um, we have to go out by Randy procurement purposes, we have to go out and do the proper bidding piece, but also one of our businesses has offered an outstanding thing when they call it a is it a truckload they call it, Randy? Truckload or a lot. So you got even a better price. So that's why, and so what we did was we used the money that the board gave us, part of the money that the board gave us for the um, laptops, as well as this transfer, asking you to transfer, which is money that both the middle school and high school buildings principals have taken from their, their discretionary funds to transfer in to cover them the other part. So that's what that money is. That makes sense to everyone. The one with the uh, 5B? Or, yeah. uh, yes, yes, ma'am. Okay. okay, just want to let you know. Well, I know, I read what it was and it makes more sense now. Okay. Yeah, it did. It did. Okay. I, did. I couldn't understand what that was. So thank so you. So Randy that. crafted that and Sue with, with the building principles. And so we re it's reallocation of our resources. Yeah. And then that will make our district whole concerning all of the. Up, upgrades on those, those those computer pieces and and or the television sets with the casting devices. So I just wanted the board to know that. Okay. <clears throat> so we're on 5B. I have a motion to approve the budget appropriation transfers. Motion. Motion, Mrs. Morgan. Second. Second. Mr. LaFountain. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
motion passed. Okay, do we have anything at this point here? We're caught up on everything, I think. So I have a motion to adjourn to conduct a board retreat for the purpose of developing and improving team building communication skills and or interpersonal skills relations and to gain education and training related to school board service. Okay. We have a motion. Motion, Mr. Peters. Second. Second, Mrs. Mitchell. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we'll adjourn to go into the community room for that retreat. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Urban. You have no tables in there. They robbed Peter to pay Paul. I don't know. I didn't no, know. I said there. There are enough, right? Yeah. Well, there's a couple. Do you know if they made enough, Randy?